Hi guys, welcome back to the Mina Does Art Stuff YouTube channel. My name is Mina and today we're going to do a light fastness test review. So a few months ago I posted my um, first part to my light fast testing uh, light fastness testing project where I painted out swatches for a bunch of the watercolours that I had and um, I cut the strips in half and went ahead and popped the left side in um, a south facing window we're here in the U we're in the UK so south facing windows get the most sunlight and I did these swatches this, this test went up on the 3rd of June of this year so right sort of at the beginning of the summer now we haven't had the most amazing summer this year but we have had some sunny days and so these have been up in the window now since the 3rd of June and it is now the 19th of October so what is that in four months they've been in the window for four months I'm gonna kind of I'm not gonna do any more um, I'm not gonna leave them in the window for any longer I feel like this has given me enough information to go on for now um, one thing I will say is that you'll notice in all my swatches here that I've done sort of like full almost mass tone of the colors where I've done like the darkest version of those colors on the swatches what I've learned since doing this and there's another youtuber called Kimberly Crick um, who does lots of really good light fastness tests and reviews and other sorts of videos on her channel which if I remember I will leave linked below otherwise you can just go search on YouTube Kimberly Crick and her channel will come up um, and what I learned from her is that sometimes with certain colours they can fade more in lighter washes than they do in the mass tone so it's always important to make sure that you do your swatching for light fastness in like a gradient so I think going forward and even with some of the colors in the pile here that we're going to look at I'm probably going to do another light fastness test and make sure I do the swatches as more of a gradient than um, just a solid swatch to really test and see how the colors may or may not fade um, over time and the reason why I'm going to be retesting some of the colors is because there are some colors in here that are notorious for fading that have not actually faded that badly and it might just be that you know maybe we just didn't get enough sun maybe it's not been in the window long enough or maybe it's that they fade more in a wash than they do in mass tone so that's why the, so there are certain colors that I'm definitely going to be retrying with um, this test with okay so starting out we have, um, these were some of the Turner watercolours that I did. I'm not going to go over every single one. I'm going to just point out the ones that have noticeable changes. And I have marked them and I have a couple of different marks. So the spots, if I if I have like a little black dot, that's usually just um, minor changes or not so much of a change that I feel like it would impact the overall look of a painting with that degree of fading. So with the Turner watercolours, the Rose Madder and the Mayan Blue are, I'm not sure how well it picks up on camera, but in real life they, have, the Maya Blue has faded ever so slightly. In real life, the Rose Madder almost looks like it's a touch darker than it was uh, when I first swatched it out. You can sort of see it there. The swatch on the left is a little bit darker which I'm not entirely sure about that or why that's happened. Otherwise, all the other colors on this strip were absolutely fine. The second strip, some more, the rest of the Turner colors that I swatched were also absolutely fine. Um, towards the bottom here, the Windsor & Newton Opera surprisingly did well. Like it's definitely got some fading. The Again, it's not gonna pick up super well on camera. You can kind of see here, it's like, there we go. You can kind of see there, the luminosity of that opera is what's faded but the color is still looking really good um the next up the windsor and newton prussian blue this is what i mean this is one of those colors that i'm definitely going to be testing again because it has some fading i'm trying to see if i can show you at an angle there you go that seems to be the good angle to show you um you can see there's some fading but nothing too significant at all like nothing really bad um nothing where I'd be like oh that's ruined a painting because it's faded so much um, but yeah so that seems fine to me then next up we have uh, the Arteza 36 color set um, I'm not going to go through these one by one because if I just lay them all out here you'll see um, how these are fed not great <laughs> 
So anything with an X on it means it's faded terribly. Anything with a dot means it's faded a bit, but nothing horrendous. Nothing that I would consider to be absolutely horrendous. Like these three blues here have definitely faded a bit, but nothing terrible. Whereas these reds have all like basically, I mean, some of these yellows have basically gone back to white. It's absolutely, um, yeah. That was that was a surprise. I knew they weren't going to be the best quality paints, but I wasn't expecting them to completely fade quite so badly. So this is the 36 set of Arteza watercolors. Um, I'd say they'd be all right for like sketchbook work and stuff, but nothing you're planning on hanging on a wall in a room exposed to sunlight. So those were the Arteza watercolors. And even on the swatches that were left in a dark um, dark place, so I had the ones that weren't going in the window, I had them up in the, um, say up, I had them in my uh, bedside table drawer, so in a dark drawer. But even those swatches look a bit streaky and not that great. Alright, then next up we have the Magello Mission Gold watercolours. These actually did really well. Only one has some slight fading unsurprisingly that's the Prussian blue like I said Prussian blue is notorious for fading so I was fully expected this to be worse you can see that difference there um, there we go you can see that's faded a bit but it's really not that bad at all it's really not obvious um, at least not there again it's not so obvious that I'd be like oh that painting's ruined now but the rest of all turned out absolutely fine now this is a set that I could do a video on separately if you guys are interested in. This is the Magello Mission Gold Pure Pigment Set plus three additional paints that weren't in the original Pure Pigment Set. There's the Prussian Blue that I added. Peacock Blue is a two pigment colour and Sap Green which is also a two or a multi pigment mix. So those were ones I bought separately and added otherwise everything else is from the um, single pigment 24 set so I could do a, a review video on those if that's something you're interested in please let me know then next up we have a selection of Schmincke Schmincke paints I didn't swatch out all of my Schmincke paints I just swatched out the ones that I thought might fade I was curious to see if they would fade or um, yeah, I just wanted to see how they would hold up. So, for example, like typically, in general, with watercolours, reds and pinks and violets are quite hard to... Um, it's quite hard to find good, light, fast reds and pinks and violets. There are some, but some of them do fade as well. So I was really happy to see that most of my Schmincke reds and pinks are really light fast other than the only one that's not is Schmincke's Brilliant Purple and that is actually a fluorescent paint so again it loses its um, luminosity that's fluorescent um, aspects to it uh, annoyingly fluorescence isn't something that picks up particularly well on camera so I'm trying to show you as best as I can I think you can see it there but I don't think it's faded that badly it hasn't like faded to white or anything you still have the color of the pigment is just the fluorescent dye part of it has faded and that's what gives it the brightness but it's still a usable pretty color so I don't think it would again I don't think that um, would necessarily ruin a painting and then with the other colors that I swatched from Schmincke again just testing to see if any of these would fade the only one that's shown some sign of fading again is the Prussian blue um, I'm not sure if you can see that on camera. My camera's kind of like trying to adjust for adjust for that a little bit, but it definitely has faded ever so slightly, not much at all. Again, not nice. Not it's not the sort of thing where if I'd painted something using Prussian blue and then came back to it six months later or four months later and was like, oh, that blue is really faded. Like that's not the difference that I see there. It's not that noticeable. I mean, there is a difference, but I don't think it's that worrisome. The other one that I thought was interesting was Schmincke's Indigo because even though it's a two pigment mix one of the pigments is an original syndigo, an original indigo pigment so I fully expected that to fade more than it has 
but maybe again it's just one of those that needed to be washed out a little bit more to see any sort of fading um, okay and then we have a mix of uh, different brands that I've been trying out so had some Winsor & Newton I did White Knights Russian Green which again very surprised I've seen absolutely zero fading of this color but again I think this is one where you notice the fading more when you use it a bit more watered down than I have here then Holbein's Opera I think you can see that on camera that it's faded again it's that luminous um, fluorescent dye same with the Holbein Bright Violet that one's faded a lot and the Holbein Prussian Blue is by far the worst in terms of fading compared to the other Prussian blues that we've looked at. Um, yeah, that one's definitely very different. Then, I've no idea what this is. This like spotting that's happened here. I don't know what that is. Um, I don't think that's to do with fading. I think that's just maybe something got on the paints before um, I put it on up on the window. So, Again, we've got some Winsor & Newton, some Lucas paints, Sennelier, Daniel Smith. And the only one I've seen a difference on on this page is the Deep Sap Green by Daniel Smith. That you can see has had some fading. It's lightened up a little bit from what it was before. However, having said that, I don't mind the colour it's faded to. I actually quite like that colour. So I probably wouldn't mind too much if something I painted with this colour faded a little bit. As long as it doesn't fade much more. I actually probably wouldn't be too disappointed with that. <laughs> so there's that. I mean, that's obviously personal choice and personal taste. But for me, I actually quite like the colour it faded out to. So there we go. And then we have some more sap greens up here. So this is Shinhan Sap Green, which has shown ever so slight. I don't even know if you can pick up on camera how subtle it is. Even in real life, I can't tell that. I can only see that it's ever so slightly less sort of yellow tinge to it. It's got ever so slightly less yellow. And this Shinhan Sap Green is the PG8 pigment, which is the same as the White Knight's Russian Green, which, like I mentioned, is apparently notorious for fading, but I don't see that happening here. There again, it might be one of those that I need to put do a test with more of a wash, so I will be testing this one again. And then Bright Rose definitely fades again it's that fluorescent pigment that fades but the underlying pink color is still there although this one's definitely faded quite badly then we have the shinhan indigo which is the um natural indigo pigment so that has some fading there but again not actually as terrible as i thought it would be but definitely still some fading there um, and then some Daniel Smith colours and then the Daniel Smith Prussian Blue as well shows signs of fading compared to the original swatch. I think you can see that there. Not as bad as the Holbein but not as good as the others. Alright, then we have some more colours. So the Rembrandt Naphthol Red has definitely changed hue a little bit i don't i wouldn't say it's faded it's just like the intensity of and the brightness of the red seems to have faded a bit um then daniel smith's permanent alizarin crimson um one of the pigments in that hue mix is known to be um a bit fugitive which ironically is the one above it the anthraconoid red which i can't see any fading in that color but again, I think this one needs to be tested as a lighter wash than in mass tone. But I've definitely noticed a shift in the colour in the permanent alizarin crimson. The rest are all okay. The Holbein Van Dyke Brown has definitely faded, as has the Holbein Carmine. Now, I fully expected this one to fade because this is the original alizarin crimson pigment, the PR83, which is known to fade. But there, the Holbein permanent alizarin crimson looks great then we have the kuretake paints which have fared somewhat like a bit so-so um, okay ignore these ones for now 
Um, again, like I mentioned, reds and pinks are quite hard to find light fastness versions of, so a lot of the reds and pinks and some of the oranges and yellows have faded over here in the Kurotake colours. So you can see that there. Um, otherwise, the greens and blues have held up pretty well. I think this was Prussian blue again that's faded. But again, not terribly, but it has faded. And then on this one here, I think this one was called purple. And that's basically completely disappeared. But I also don't know what this whole texture thing is going on here. Um, again, I'm not sure if that's something to do with the paint reacting to light or what, but I don't know what that texture is. And then we move on to some of my White Nights paints that I tested out here. And you can see here the golden colour. And I think I mentioned this in a recent haul video when I got the golden deep colour by White Nights, which is a very similar sort of hue, but it's a more light fast pigment. And you can see that this one really is not light fast. It's faded to yellow, basically. It is no longer orange. And the scarlet is also faded a little bit. It's lost some of that brightness. But again, nothing too terrible. And then we have some more White Nights colours. Just make sure I get all the... Yeah. So here, White Nights Carmine has some slight fading or colour shift to it. And the Matter Lake has a very slight colour shift. I'm not, you can't even see it all too clearly on camera. Um, but the swatch on the left, which was in the window, just looks a little bit more dull, a little bit darker. The Neon Pink, which is White Knight's version of Opera, is also obviously fading. Um, the Quinacridone Lilac, I don't know if it's actually faded or not, but it looks like a slightly different shade of that pigment on the left there so I'm, I think it's reacted a little bit but I can't really tell and then Winsor & Newton Violet has uh, very much faded and gone quite dull and then their Prussian Blue has also faded a little bit it doesn't look that bad but I'm pretty sure this one does fade a bit more significantly than this because I've noticed it even on like swatches when I've done my swatch charts for a palette that the blue the Prussian blue seems to have faded so I will test that one again I'm just it's not showing up that much you can sort of see there how the swatch on the left has um, faded a bit but it's not that significant I don't think also I don't know how well you will to see it on camera but the neutral black at the bottom here is also faded sort of see that a little bit okay then we have some other paints so Daniel Smith's Moon Glow another one that's notorious for fading um, you can see there that the color has changed what's happened here is the red pigment in the Moon Glow mix has faded it's still there a little bit on the left but it's definitely faded it's definitely got more of a blue feel to it than this paint on the, the swatch on the right I don't think it's ugly I don't think that level of fading is enough to put me off using my Moon Glow paint. But I think once it runs out, I might look to maybe try and make a light fast version or like alternative for myself. Then Sennelier's Opera has faded a bit. Again, it's just lost that luminosity, but it doesn't look too bad. Shinhan's Permanent Red and M. Graham's Quinacridone Red have both got some slight colour shifts, which is interesting because they both use the same pigment and I was under the impression that this was a fairly stable pigment, so it's interesting that they've faded ever so slightly. But there again, the Shinhan one a bit more, but I wouldn't say they're anything too, too terrible. And the Daniel Smith's Mine Dark Blue has also shifted a little bit. There's a bit of fading there. Then Daniel Smith's Mayan Blue Genuine has faded. Um, the rest of these are all okay. The Van Gogh Quinacridone Rose has some fading as well. Nothing too dramatic, but the Van Gogh Madder Lake has definitely faded. There's definitely a lot of fading going on there. And finally, uh, the last lot of Van Gogh paints, Prussian Blue at the top. Funnily enough, this one has done the best. I can't see any noticeable difference between the two sides of that Prussian blue swatch and the rest of these have turned out fine as well.
So those are the results of my light fastness test. It's been going for a little over four months. Bear in mind, it's been a British summer. So, you know, we've had some good days, some bad days, but probably not the hottest weather or the sunniest weather. Um, so take that for what you will. I live in the south of the UK. Um, and yeah, so this is how my paints have fared up in sunlight where I am. I have added some new paints to my collection since doing this and I have other paints that I never got around to swatching the first time so I might do another round of this probably in the spring next year and have it up for about six months this time over the summer and we'll see how those fare and I will definitely do the swatching as more of a gradient to get a better sort of more accurate um, read on those um, light fastness tests. All right thank you so much um, everyone for joining me today i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you found it informative let me know what you think have you done any light fastness tests yourself what have you found to be colors that are faded that you were surprised to see fade or that you were surprised it didn't fade um i'd love to hear your thoughts on that all right i'll see you next time bye